guys, welcome to the last video of um, this semester, which is an exam overview. So some of you have asked questions like, um, you know, what do I expect? What can I expect from the exam? And how can I prepare for the exam, etc. Right? So um, I'm just going to go briefly over uh, the details of the exam, the things that I can, uh, you know, share in advance. Right? So, um, the exam this year, this semester, is going to be 90 minutes long, so you don't have to sit there for two hours coding, you know, that's quite boring. Um, so I have reduced half an hour because it's organized by us. Um, so it's 90 minutes long, uh, it contributes to 50% of the unit, okay? Uh, and pretty much the materials covered in the exam can come from anywhere, from the lectures, the labs, the assignments, and so forth, right? Um, so do uh, get familiar with uh, all the materials. How, um, for the assignments, I understand that not everybody, you know, um, got through answering all questions. So if if you do find a question about the assignment, uh, you will not be penalized by not knowing the previous assignment answers. It will be stand uh, standalone type of questions. So by reading the questions, although it's related to the assignment, but you can still answer it by understanding the question. Okay, so don't uh, panic about that either. Um, so this is done through the quiz server. So past um, a couple of semesters, um, it has been done through Exemplify, but Exemplify has been now removed. And you know, coding in the uh, text editor is bleh. Um, so instead, you will have access to your IDEs um, as well as Excel to do stuff and actually debug your code. Um, as necessary, okay? Uh, I'll go into that a little bit more in the next slide, okay? Um, so just like the mid sam you have the time limit set, so after 90 minutes, it's going to auto-submit unless you submit it before the time limit runs out, okay? Um, and basically, you will have the similar instruction as the mid sam okay? Um, if you want to bring a calculator, you can bring a UWA-approved um, calculators, but, you know, you have access to uh, IDs and Excel and whatnot, so you know, may, may not be useful, but you know, you can still bring it for sanity checks or I don't know, whatever you need it for. Um, you can find some more final exams in the library, um, but this unit did get uh, updated uh, since last year, uh, so the style is going to be quite different, okay? So um, the previous year, there's going to be a lot less questions about coding. Maybe you see some more multiple choice uh, types of questions, but because that's done by hand on paper, but now we have moved on to online system for the exam for this unit. So uh, the amount of questions you get is quite different, right? So you expect to write code that you know works reasonably well to ex expectations. You are given a bunch of test cases that you can have a look. Uh, of course, there will be some hidden cases, but you should be able to think about some of the edge cases to answer those. Um, and you have access to like IDs and stuff that it can pick up some uh, syntax errors, you know. Um, yeah, so let's have a look. The content, uh, it covers all three main topics, uh, Excel, Python, and uh, data analysis and visualization. And the proportion is roughly as noted in this slide. So you have Five Excel questions uh, that adds up to about 20 marks. Um, you have 12, 12 Python questions, 47 marks. And finally, you have seven data analysis and visualization questions, which add up to 33 marks. So data analysis and visualization, it, yeah, you know, it's kind of like two parts, right? You have the analysis part, which is using NumPy and SymPy. And also you have the visualization part, which is doing uh, the Matplotlib, 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 Matplotlib right? Um, so having said that, there's about mm, three graphing questions, okay, and the others are data, data analysis questions, okay. So that should give you an idea as well. So that adds up to 100 marks in total. Um, so that's um, 24 questions as well you, that you have to do in 90 minutes. So if you convert it to an hourly rate, that's roughly about 16 questions per hour. Um, so this has been set based on the feedback from the mid sem that having 19 questions was, you know, too much. Okay, and uh, yeah, I understand that. Um, so we scaled it back to 16 questions, which seemed more reasonable. Okay, 
So hopefully this time, um, you know, you have enough time to read through and answer the questions that you can attempt to, right? Um, the way it's run, the style of the exam is just like the mid -sem. So um, now you should be able to, you know, imagine yourself doing the exam, which is quite different to other traditional exam setups, right? So um, yeah, that's how it's going to be running. Uh, so you have done it before, so no more surprises there, okay? Uh, same setups, closed book, uh, so you can't really bring any other materials. Um, but you will have access to the IDs, as mentioned before, and Microsoft Excel, as well as the lecture slides um, on the quiz server, so you can just browse through the lecture slides as needed, okay? Um, yeah, so how can we study for the exam? Well. I, everyone has their own way of studying, right? So I'm not going to dictate that you must follow these kind of steps, but just give you an idea what kind of things you can try. Um, but probably the most useful thing that you can try is actually attempt the practice exam and practice mid -sem on the quiz server, because that's exactly the format you're going to get. Um, like that you're going to, you, you are doing the exam itself, right? So in a timed time manner, not looking at anything else, but only the access to the lecture slide, not looking at the labs or assignments, um, and try, try to answer those uh, by yourself within the time frame. Okay, so that's going to be a good practice for the exam. Um, use the PDF slides, the lecture slides as reference for topics covered. Um, it's a good idea to get used to um, what items are covered at which lectures, so that if you need to refresh them during the exam, you can quickly locate that um, uh, while you're in the exam setting, because even though I reduced the number of questions, I suppose you know you will still run out of time um, if you are in a rush, right? Uh, read online or watch lectures if you don't understand the topic, uh, but of course uh, you can look up further into other online resources to um, understand better about the topics as well. Okay, practice each topic or the concept in Python and Excel. That means you shouldn't just read over the code that's presented to you on the slides, but you should actually try it out and see how it behaves or what it does, right? Um, for example, like the, the list aliasing problem, that comes over and over again, and yet people are still asking questions, why isn't this working, right? So, you know, you have to get these concepts really clear uh, in your mind for, for, for you to be able to, you know, proceed with the questions uh, in a timely manner. And remember, the questions are meant to test your knowledge, right? So we, we're not trying to write trick questions or anything, but uh, it does require us to provide enough details so that you can implement uh, the concept that you expect to write um, in your solution. Okay. So some questions can be a little bit lengthy, but um, you know that's the discussion that we had after the mid sem and has been reduced. So hopefully this time. Um, it's, uh, the length is uh, much more fairer than the mid -sem. Okay, that's pretty much it for the exam. So, that's it. I hope um, this unit content uh, will be uh, useful for you um, sometime later. Um, you know, knowing programming uh, enables you to do a lot more stuff uh, than not knowing, right? So, yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, all the best with the, uh, this exam and other exams that you have and future studies and whatever you have in plan. All right, I'll stop here. Um, maybe if you're taking some other units that I do, I'll see you there. Otherwise, bye.